What's going on everybody, Kalipas Tech here coming back at you with another video. In this video, I'm going to be going over some of my favorite and least favorite things about the Samsung Galaxy A04s to help you decide whether or not it's the right phone for you. Now as always, if you want to learn more about this phone, definitely check out the description where we'll be linking to several other videos about it, as well as some information about pricing, availability, and some of my favorite smartphone accessories. But with that being said, let's get right into it. So my first pro for the Samsung Galaxy A04s is the storage. Now with this phone, we're getting 64 gigabytes of internal storage with micro SD card expansion and for being a really entry level device under $200 this is definitely a pretty good amount of storage now on one hand if you're someone who's constantly downloading apps especially stuff like games that tend to take up a bit more space then 64 gigabytes is still not going to be that much to you but I do feel like for the average user especially with micro SD card expansion for such an entry level phone 64 gigabytes is definitely a decent amount now one thing I do want to mention here is that as of the recording of this video in February of 2023 the Samsung Galaxy A04s is not yet officially launched in the US, so this phone I have in my hand is an unlocked international version. So what this means is when this phone inevitably does get to US carriers, it may or may not actually end up having 64 gigabytes. Now I really hope it does, because at this point in 2023, I feel like 64 gigabytes is really honestly a bare minimum. With things like apps, the system, and just files in general getting larger and larger as time goes on, the typical 32 gigabytes we usually see in really entry level phones just really isn't enough anymore. So if the US version of this phone does end up having the same amount of storage, that is going to be a really good thing about this phone. But again, keep in mind, as of right now, we don't really know for sure because again, at this point in time, the A04s is still only an international phone. But that being said, again, based on this current version of the phone with 64 gigabytes of internal storage, for what it is, it definitely does have a good amount. Now my second pro for the Samsung Galaxy A04s is the software. Now with this phone, we are getting Android 13 right out of the box, and I feel like this actually makes it one of the few phones in this price range that has Android 13. I've heard, for example, the Motorola Moto G Play 2023, which I will be covering soon, still only has Android 12. So in general, that really just goes to show how good Samsung software support is. So if you are looking for an entry-level phone and you want to make sure you get the latest version of Android, in that case, the Samsung Galaxy A04s, or really any Samsung Galaxy A-series phone for that matter, is going to be a great choice. Now my third pro for the Samsung Galaxy A04s is the battery. Now with this phone, we're getting a 5000 mAh battery that supports 15 watt fast charging and okay, the fast charging really isn't the best, but as far as the actual battery itself, with a 5000 mAh battery, you can expect to get really good battery life and longevity here. And while on one hand, this really isn't a surprise at all, considering pretty much every Samsung Galaxy A-series phone I've ever seen, at least for a little while, all of them have 5000 mAh batteries, so this is really nothing new. With the A04s specifically, compared to other phones in this price range, there are lots of low-end phones like this that honestly have pretty small batteries. So if you are in a situation where maybe you're not always around a charger and you want to make sure you have a phone that's really going to last all day, then a phone like the Samsung Galaxy A04s that has a 5000 mAh battery is going to be a great choice. And with such a large battery, not only is this phone going to get plenty of battery life per charge, but also down the road as the battery degrades, which all batteries do. It's not really going to impact you nearly as quickly as it would with a smaller battery. So if you like to get one phone and keep it for a longer time, then again, because of the battery size, this phone is going to be a great choice for that. My fourth pro for the Samsung Galaxy A04s is the photo quality we get with the camera. Now with this phone, up front, we go to water drop notch for the front facing camera. This camera is 5 megapixels. Then on the back, we go to triple camera setup with a 50 megapixel main camera, a 2 megapixel macro camera, and a 2 megapixel depth sensing camera. In addition to having at least a decent amount of features, with a 50 megapixel main camera for such an entry level phone, this is a really nice camera. And as such, of course, it can take really good pictures. So if you're taking a lot of photos, maybe for something like social media, for example, and you want to make sure they actually look good enough to post. For that kind of use, if you are looking for a more affordable phone like this, the Samsung Galaxy A04s is going to be a great choice. To give you an idea of what it can do, here's some photos taken with the main camera, and yeah, definitely for what it is, real good quality photos. Sure, compared to a much higher end device, it's obviously not going to be quite as good as something like a Samsung Galaxy A53 5G for example, but when you compare it to your average camera from a phone under $200, you'll definitely see there is quite a difference. So if you are taking a lot of pictures and you want to make sure the photo quality comes out nice, then again, the Samsung Galaxy A04s is going to be a great choice. And my fifth pro for the Samsung Galaxy A04s is the large display. Now we're going to talk a bit more about the display later in the video, but right now I want to go over the size and dimensions. So at 6.5 inches, the display we're getting with the Samsung Galaxy A04s is definitely on the larger side. So if you're doing stuff like web browsing, social media, maybe reading, and of course if you're going to be on your phone a lot, this is definitely a good thing. In addition to being decently large, this phone also has a nice tall and narrow form factor with a 20 by 9 aspect ratio. So if you're doing something in landscape mode, you're going to get a nicer, more cinematic view. Things are going to look a lot more immersive. 
And then of course, if you're browsing the web, scrolling through social media, stuff like that, with a form factor like this, you can fit more content on the screen without having to scroll as much. So overall, is this really unique per se? I don't think so. When it comes to the display, honestly, pretty much every phone like this is going to have almost the exact same display. But the main point here is for more light activities like web browsing, social media, and maybe watching the occasional video every now and then, you really don't need a fancy 1080p AMOLED display. And for that kind of use, something like the Samsung Galaxy A04s is going to be perfectly fine. But now that we've gone over some of the good things about this phone, let's go over some drawbacks. So my first con for the Samsung Galaxy A04s is it doesn't have an ultra-wide camera. Now this is really too bad because despite having a really good quality camera like we talked about earlier, it is unfortunately lacking in a really common useful feature that I want to see the vast majority of phones in general have. So if you are taking a lot of pictures and you want a wider variety of features, and maybe you're taking a lot of vacation photos for example, pictures of buildings, rooms, group photos, stuff like that, in that kind of situation an ultra-wide camera is really useful and again, although not every single phone in the world has one, at this point in 2023 even really low-end phones have ultra-wide cameras. So honestly, if you really do want that feature, well, it's not really the end of the world that this phone doesn't have it, you can easily find a phone around the same price that does. So if having an ultra-wide camera is important to you, then again, keep in mind, unfortunately, the A04s doesn't have one. My second con for the Samsung Galaxy A04s is the processor. Now, considering that this is a really entry-level phone, I wouldn't really say it's that bad. I mean, compared to most phones in this price range, sure, there are some phones like the T-Mobile Revel 6, for example, that despite being only like one $160 is somehow just super fast. But when it comes to entry level phones that aren't offered through carriers, like this phone as of right now, phones like this honestly just tend to be on the slower side. And with the Samsung Galaxy A04s, it's not really much different. With this phone, we're getting 4 gigabytes of RAM with the Exynos 850 processor. So on one hand, compared to other phones like it, it's definitely not the worst, I will say that. But if you're coming from maybe more of a mid-range phone or upper end entry level phone like for example, the Motorola Moto G Stylus 4G. Compared to something like that that's definitely not the fastest, but has at least decent performance, a phone like the Samsung Galaxy A04s is going to feel quite a bit slower. So on one hand, if you're just using the phone for more basic activities like light web browsing, occasional social media use, and maybe watching a couple videos every now and then, for that kind of situation, you will get by. But if you're going to be on your phone a lot, or maybe you're coming from an older mid-range phone, in that kind of situation, the performance, despite again not being terrible, is probably still going to feel pretty slow to you. Now I did run a benchmark test on this phone using Geekbench 5, and here are the results I got. So what I recommend doing is running this test on your current phone, and then comparing your results to these. And that's going to give you a better idea of whether or not this phone's going to be a performance upgrade for you. Now in general, I can't really imagine it being that much of an upgrade for a lot of people, but maybe if you're just not really concerned about performance, and you just want something decent that works for super basic activities, then in that case, this phone will be perfectly fine. But again, if you're coming from a slightly upper end entry level 4G phone, then keep in mind there is a pretty decent chance your current phone will already be faster. My third con for the Samsung Galaxy A04s is the cheap materials. Now usually I don't mention this when it comes to lower end phones like this, because after all, most people are probably going to use a case anyway, but I just wanted to point out that materials on this phone do feel abnormally cheap for some reason. The back has kind of a glossy finish that really shows fingerprints a lot. At certain angles it has an interesting texture to it, I don't think you can even see it on here, but it's like a wavy kind of look, which it looks decent, I will give them that. But again, when it comes to the actual phone itself, it has like no weight to it. The phone while it doesn't feel like it's going to fall apart, just really doesn't feel high quality at all. And I mean, again, this is a really entry level phone, so you can only expect so much, but I've seen $50 Cricut phones that are pretty much the same quality, if not even better. So in general, on one hand, do I really expect this to be that important to a lot of people? Probably not. And especially if you're planning on putting a case on it anyway, which I do recommend for a device like this, you're probably not even going to notice. But if you are someone who cares a little bit more about materials, then keep in mind, the materials we're getting with the A04s are really not that high quality. My fourth con for the Samsung Galaxy A04s is the 720p display. So yeah, with this phone we are getting a 720p resolution in a PPI of 270. And while on one hand the colors and brightness do look pretty good for what it is, and honestly the image doesn't look terrible, I mean if you're watching the occasional video every now and then, it still is going to be fine. At this point in 2023, I was really hoping we'd start seeing more entry level phones that have 1080p resolutions instead. I mean even compared to the Samsung Galaxy A13 4G, that one phone that came out mid 2022 that everyone seems to have forgotten about. That phone had such a good display, and it made me start to think that maybe Samsung was about to start putting 1080p resolutions in their 4G phones too. But unfortunately, it seems like that was kind of a one-off. And with the Samsung Galaxy A04s, 
we are unfortunately still getting a 720p resolution. So if you are going to be consuming a lot of content, especially stuff like videos, where the image quality really matters a lot, then you might want to skip this phone. Because while, again, I can't stress this enough, the image doesn't look terrible. I mean, it really is decent. If consuming content is really all you're doing with your phone, you can definitely do better. And finally, my fifth con for the Samsung Galaxy A04s is that it doesn't have NFC. Now considering, of course, this is an entry-level phone, this really wouldn't have been a big deal if I didn't see $200 Cricket phones before this that actually do have NFC. In general, at this point in 2023, with contactless mobile payment services becoming so widely used and so many other phones having the feature, I feel like the it's an entry-level phone excuse just doesn't work anymore. So at this point, honestly, having NFC is more or less an expectation now. So when a phone, even a phone like this, doesn't have it, it definitely is a drawback to think about. So if you are someone who likes to use tap and pay, then keep in mind, unfortunately, with the Samsung Galaxy A04s, we're not getting that feature. But those were my pros and cons for the Samsung Galaxy A04s. While this opinion definitely may change once the phone reaches the US, and maybe we start to see a bunch of carrier deals, and that kind of situation, if you end up being able to get this phone for like $50, then yeah, there's definitely a good case in its favor. But honestly, at this point, for the current unlocked price, while I definitely don't think it's a terrible phone by any means, I do think for the money, unless you're just getting it for the camera, because the camera, again, is really good. Aside from that, I do really think for the most part, you can probably find a better phone for the money. But as always, if you do want to learn more about this phone, definitely check out the description, where again, I will be linking to several other videos about it, as well as some information about pricing, availability, and some of my favorite smartphone accessories. But that's it for this video. If you enjoyed it and found it useful, be sure to give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. Don't forget to follow Kalipas Tech on Twitter and Instagram. And as always, I will see you in the next video.